السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم النبيين محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Welcome to a discussion with the world-renowned Sheikh Shafiq Huda from Kitchener, Canada um, The Sheikh has spoken all around the world on various topics in the UK, in Muharram, places of Dubai and he's going to Africa inshallah soon um, The topic I want to talk about today is contemporary issues for the Muslim youth. It's a vast topic, we're going to try and get through as much as we can, uh, Allah permitting inshallah. And um, the Shaykh I know has got loads, of to loads to talk about, he's still a youth himself and these issues affect him just as much as they affect those younger than him. Um, so just, just to start us off, uh, Shaykh, um, what kind of issues do you think are affecting the Muslim youth in the Western world at the moment. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala alih al-tayyibin al-tawahideen, amma ba'd. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah to all your viewers and yourself, Munir. I thank you and I'm flattered that you are referring to me as a youth, although I have cross the threshold depending on how you define the youth and when you are discussing or talking about youth issues um, of course uh, you rightly so you mentioned that it's it's a very vast topic it is huge um, but there are some serious challenges that face the youths in the western world and some of these uh, challenges problems difficulties are not uh, different than perhaps what Muslim youths would be facing in the eastern world as well yeah. Uh, because we are in the, in the West and, and we encounter different types of issues, um, I think spiritually speaking, the, the, the challenges may be the same. You know, how we want to make sure that we are spiritually sound, uh, you know, keeping our attention on our prayers, keeping our uh, focus on our ibadat, our acts of worship, is something that I think uh, youths in the West and the uh, East will face uh, very similarly. In the Western world, there are some things that are just somewhat more available than, than, than maybe in the Eastern world, and that makes it a different kind of a challenge. Um, you know, there, there's alcohol, for example, that's available very freely. Um, you know, relations outside of marriage, sexual relations outside of marriage, which become very are prevalent in, in the universities, uh, centers of uh, higher education, colleges, and there's no restrictions on that. You know, we have very few, if any, um, for example, male-only colleges or universities or female-only colleges or universities. And um, another area that, that I have seen problems in is in, in uh, substance abuse, especially on, on, in drugs. And these are issues that are, are creeping into our community. And I, and I pray that uh, they don't uh, become prevalent, but we do know of cases and we do know of situations in which our youths are facing some very, uh, very serious matters in, in, in all of these uh, three areas. Is there something that you wish to... Well, we'll probably go through them one by one just to make it easier for the viewers so they can pick out different topics if, they need, if there's something affects them in particular. Um, just before we go into those actual um, topics we have to mention, it's not just, like you said, it's not just in the West, the East. We know in my country that there's so much substance abuse in particular is very prevalent. It's almost not even seen as haram. You know, some of the smoking of, of certain drugs is not even seen as something. It's, it's natural, you're sitting down, you've got nothing to do, you know, you light up a different substance. Um, talk about your experience, you've obviously travelled the world, Iran in particular. How do you, what kind of issues do you think are different to the what East as they are to the West? Um, this, uh, again, a subject, is, it's, a, it's a very, very practical issue. And uh, I remember once I was sitting in the uh, haram of uh, Hazrat Imam Radha alayhi salatu wasalam and uh, a youth uh, actually uh, came up to me and uh, realized that I was not Iranian for some reason, I'm not sure how. And he began uh, to, to basically speak to me on, 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 an, on an issue, on, on a youth issue. He was a youngster and um, he was speaking to me about was how to focus on ibadat, how to focus. He said that every time he tries to pray, his mind diverts and all that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, ultimately, when I you know, got a chance to talk to him, I also found out that he was you know, hoping to get married and he didn't want to obviously do something haram. But how do I go about approaching my family to talk to her family and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth? So I, I, I sort of saw a relevancy in, 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 uh, in, in the overall scope of youth challenges. 
throughout the ages, youths have had challenges. Youths have always had um, issues that, that they have been faced with. It's not something that is only in, in the 21st century or the 20th century. Um, and, and, and if you look at, for example, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, peace be upon him, you will see that he was a youth when the Prophet had uh, began his message. Yeah. And, you know, a very dynamic youth, somebody who was focused, who knew what, uh, what was right and what was wrong. Uh, the, the teachings of the Prophet uh, were obeyed immaculately by him. And, you know, as I said, being a youth, he is probably one of our, our best youth role models or examples. When the Quran and Majid talks about Ashab Kahf, the people of the cave, again, who were youths. And the Quran, you know, makes it a point to mention that these were youngsters, these were youth, they were Shabab. And so, you know, they also are, are a group that uh, need to be uh, looked at as well. <coughs> In, um, in, in our endeavor to, to see what an ideal youth uh, should be like. And again, you know, there are countless examples. When the Prophet talked about Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein being Sayyid al Shabab, Ahl al Jannah, the leaders of the youths of paradise. So we, we are constantly um, informed of the importance of youth, the importance of, 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 of a youngster, and how you know, one needs to tap that energy, that, the, the stamina, the, the, the zeal that youngsters have, and use that zeal and that energy and, and, and that stamina for, for goodness, for the sake of the message of Islam, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So youths are, have got very similar issues, east and the west, north or the south, in the contemporary era where we are living in now, or previous centuries as well. So there's no, um, the, no difference in the, in the idea that there have been challenges. Maybe what, what is the prevalency of a certain era will be different, and that, that's I'm sure something that um, your viewers will appreciate as well, Brother Munir. Do you think that there's more pressure, perhaps, uh, because the prevalence of certain drugs in, in Western countries, and not just drugs, obviously drugs we focus on so much, but things like alcohol. I mean, in an Islamic country, you can still drink, obviously, we know that, they're available in most countries, it's not even that hard, but because here you can just go to the off-license around the corner, buy whatever you want, you're over 18, it's very easy. And then friends might be doing it, and then, you know, places you might go, and all the good love, but do you think then there's more pressure on people in the West? I mean.